So it's uh, 6.02, I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, we're still waiting for a couple people to arrive. Hopefully they will. Um, so uh, the first item on the agenda, are, are there any adjustments to the agenda at all? I don't have any. Okay, I have one. Um, I made a pretty big mistake la at the last meeting with Laura's um, pay scale. Um, so I'd like to correct that um, at this meeting. And I thought maybe we could do it during the um, uh, treasurer report. Okay. It's appropriate to do it there. So that's the only adjustment I have. Uh, any public comment at all? Maybe from any of the other folks that have joined? Hey, Michael, do you see this phone number? Uh, yes. You know Except some of the num some of the number is not um, visible to me. There's a bunch of there's four asterisks yeah. as part of it. Yeah. So it's Diana, I believe. Oh, well, let's Diana? let him in. Yes. Uh, yeah. Having a call in. Okay. Could could the caller who just entered the meeting identify themselves? Could the caller that just entered the meeting identify themselves, please? Susan Martin. <laughs> Susan Martin. Okay, thank you, Susan. So, yep. Susan, I just want you to know that we are not going to be taking up the uh, zoning application revision till you know close to around seven thirty, maybe quarter after seven. If we're okay, you're fine. Okay, I just wanted you to be aware of that. That's fine. Can you can you see me or? No. No. Okay. I can't see you guys either. So. Um, are you are you on a computer or are you on the phone? I'm on my cell phone. Okay. Is it an i iPhone or? Yeah. Okay. No. But you would have had to enter through the app to be able to see. Right. You have to. You have to have downloaded the Zoom app. In order to That's be connected, okay. you're okay. Okay, I'm 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 okay with this. Yeah. Okay, so um, one Michael, thing we got, that um, we got that, one uh, more. Okay. Uh, that's that's the town office, I believe. It's probably Diana. Diana. Hello. Okay. Here, Diana. Right. So um, for those of you that are on the phone. When you're not speaking, um, can you press star six? That'll help the audio quality of, of the meeting. And then when you wish to speak, press star six again and let us know that you would like to speak. And then when you okay. finish, and then when you finish, press star six again. Okay. Uh, let's see. So no public comment, I assume. I, so um so I would make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then I would make a motion that we approve the minutes to the uh, April 13th uh, select board meeting. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll have those minutes down in the town office uh, tomorrow morning um, for us to sign. So um, let's... Uh, have the town treasurer report now. All righty. So the balance sheet financial statement due to, due from, and um, also I had left virus hours um, mm -hmm. for the select board. I saw, yeah. To, to review. Um, over the last two weeks, for cash receipts, I took in $730 for prepaid taxes. Um, delinquencies was $2,087.82. We also received um, electronically into our bank account from the state of Vermont for the re reappraisal fund, which was $7,565 even. And also um, from the state of Vermont for the class two and class three roads 
which was a total of $17,965.80, which is split between the class two and class three road. Um, there was no need for a transfer. Um, so the other thing was, um, I just wanted to make sure that the mowing contract was signed by the board. Yes, it did get yeah. signed. Yep. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to scan that and bounce that back to um, Derek so he has a copy. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I want to um, mention is that um, in our checking account, we had cut the check back in November for the old store um, and it has not cleared the, the checking account. Um, I did issue a 1099 uh, for 2019. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna have to contact the state and figure out how to do that, that retraction um, from 2019 for that 1099. Um, yeah. Did that check ever get sent to one of the property owners or did they just never pick it up? Diana sent it um, so that yes, it was a mail. Yeah, it did. Okay, okay. Just wondered. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so um, how do we move forward with that? I mean, we can't, I, obviously they have to do something with the check before, um, it, the, you know, the book is closed on that. Um, right. And I know I, that they, I did put a call into Sarah Field um, and I haven't been back into the office mm -hmm. to check messages, um, yeah. but I'll be going in tomorrow to make sure I sign off on the, sign the checks and mail out the AP. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Brandy? Um, yep. And Brandy, when was it, when was that check issued? Uh, November 2nd, I believe. So I think it says on there that it's good for six months. So we're yes. coming up on six months, huh? Right, right. Yeah. I'll second. remind the person you, whose name is on the check. Did you end up um, hearing from Sarah Field? No. And no. I can check I can check in with you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um. So I had I had one thing I um this was from our last um, the last meeting that we had when we had a bill for the um, emergency generator at the school. Yep. Um, I had remembered there was a second line item for that generator and and the and I I found that it's it's actually um, for the fuel tank. Um, yep. For, for and you know I know we filled it up last year, I can't remember exactly when, um, but there is a thousand dollars that we budgeted for fiscal year 20. We could use, you know, if we, if we aren't anticipating having to put more propane into that tank um, and, you know, we haven't really used it except for the tests that it does, um, you know, and I, I don't really know how often the tank would need to be filled and how much it would cost, um, but we could use you know, the whatever the uh, over cost was for uh, the work that was done on the emergency generator, we could take it from there um, as opposed to the school. I'm, I did the journal entry yep. and moved it from the school and that item line covered it all. Okay, great. Uh, there great. was no, great. there was no need for looking. Yeah, so we're okay, good on great. that. Great. Um, is it is this a good time to talk about Laura's pay pay scale? Sure. Sure. Okay. So um, at the last meeting, um, I must have read her pay the check stub incorrectly. Um, I had was thought that she was making um, fifteen dollars and forty five cents an hour um, when she actually is making fourteen dollars and fifty five cents an hour. So, and, um, and we had given her um, a bump up on the pay scale according to the personnel policy for fiscal year 21 to $15 and one cent per hour. 
And, um, you know, and then we talked about also uh, bumping up one more notch um, as kind of a merit um, raise in the scale, which would bring her to um, $15 and 45 cents, um, not the $16 and 33 cent, 36 cents that, um, that we approved last time. I talked to Laura about this today and she's okay with this change. It was, you know, basically my mistake. Um, and Brandy pointed it out um, to us. Um, so I'd like to um, make a change in what we voted on um, last week and uh, present a motion that we um, uh, award um, Laura Daly um, the pay rate of $15.45 um, for fiscal year 21, starting July 1st of this coming summer. No, I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? <clears throat> Aye. Aye, okay, good. So, I won't depend on my memory so much next time. <laughs> That's mine at all. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't have any questions about the financial sheets at all. Um, one, uh, one other question I just wanted to make sure. Um, when you, I noticed there was a bill for Mountain View security for the fire alarm system at the town garage. Did, did that get sent to Mountain View or did it get sent to this new um, Seacoast security who apparently bought Mountain View out? Um, and there, I don't know who's actually dealing with the bills. Um, do, do, you, do you know who you're gonna be sending that to Brandy, the check for that? Yep, it's to the new owners. To the new owners, okay. It so had just, gone to the old one and must be, it never got forwarded or, but yeah. I haven't seen it returned either. So I canceled. Okay. I did yep. cancel it okay. and um, have the new address plugged in now. Okay, great. Yep. All right. Anything else, Brandy? No? I don't believe okay. so. No. Nope. Okay. Um, Diana, we're, we're set for the uh, town clerk report. I'm here. I'm unmuted. Okay, good. Well, my laptop at home sort of froze up all of a sudden. And so I oh, ran down see. here to the office and Laura got me signed up here so I don't have to miss too much. Okay. Yeah. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I did submit the FEMA requisition for the rest of the money. And all that's going to be left is uh, uh, approximately 7,000 something dollars that we're paying for the final uh, reclamation on the site, the topsoil and seed and mulch and final grading. So we'll get 75% of that back eventually. But um, over at VEM, they do have their hands full with other emergency stuff that's going on. So I have no idea how long it'll take, but mm -hmm. last time it only took about three weeks. Yeah, so I need to, we did get an extension to May 30th, and I was a little worried with this COVID thing that that might not be enough, but now that contractors are allowed to go back to work, I have to get in touch with our guy and make a plan to uh, get him out here to finish that up. Um, Diana, I have a question. Uh-huh. Is there any um, plans for guardrails or anything around that culvert or around the brook? I was hoping to talk with the with the V Trans people when we had our meeting because it seems like that would be nice. Although there's nothing on the other side, but still, it just, just it seems like a kind of a dangerous open hole there. Yeah, I I agree. I have looked at that, mm -hmm. and I. Don't know whether the state will actually come through with replacing those culverts ever or not. But in the meantime, it would seem like at least a Jersey barriers, if not some short piece of guardrail would would make some sense. Right. So that meeting with Shauna and Jaron is still something that's going to happen in the foreseeable I I future. Yeah, I could offer a little bit about that. I am, um, you know, we have a question. We have a question with the culvert right in the village under Valley Lake Road too. So I, I contacted um, 
Jaron Borg and, and Shauna Clifford about that. Um, and Jaron emailed back saying that um, he is no, that Woodbury is no longer in his district and that we're now back in the hands of Patrick Ross. Um, oh, and that they, at, at the moment, they are not allowed to, to do any site visits until May 15th you know, at the okay. moment. So All right. we're kind of waiting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, so I've been communicating mostly with Patrick at this point, and I'd like to have him um, take a look at that culvert. Um, mm. And also um, I mentioned the, the stream, um, you know, just taking a look at the stream because we're thinking that with those different blocks that we may need to do some restoration work there. And, and Shauna would probably be a part of that. Um, when the last time um, I spoke with Shauna, um, they had um, an engineer that was a VTrans engineer that was going to be co coming to take a look at the the um, culverts that go under Route 14 in the village there um, to start, uh, you know, to begin the process of um, replacing those culverts. Um, but she, you know, she said that, you know, this is the very beginning stage. It would be a FEMA grant that they would be trying for um, mm -hmm. to, to do that work and that it, you know, it's not going to happen in the uh, immediate future. So I don't know when, it, but, you know, maybe within the next three or four, five or six years. <laughs> but it is sort of, it is sort of in the works. They're starting to also, think about yeah. it. When they, when FEMA took away that part of our funding last year, I think it was August, um, it was mentioned that there might be other money f available from them in the future. So I've asked our uh, VEM people to uh, start looking into that. Okay. Possibly well, no. that if there's Another more FEMA money branch. left in that particular pot of money. What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be nice because that's going to be expensive. Yeah, it will be. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on to the uh, rest of the. Uh, we've been getting along okay here, doing most of our business by telephone and email. Um, mm -hmm. Had a few people stop by for a few things and drop their dog licenses in the drop box and that's all been getting done. Um, I am going to start letting people come in by appointment on Tuesdays and Thursdays when, when I'm the only one here because it's not a problem to keep six feet away mm -hmm. if people go into the vault and we've got all our protective measures in place, our Clorox wipes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I've only had one one appointment so far. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, the days seem to be busy. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything specific, else specific to report on. Okay. All right. Any questions? I don't have any. I don't have any. No. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> So um, on to the town highway report. Um, I um, just briefly, I have, I got a letter from our lawyer um, who just listing the different things that um, the town sent for the record um, for the uh, appeal process. Uh, he, had, Diana and I put that together um, the day after our last select board meeting and sent it to Michael Tarrant, the um, lawyer who's been helping us with this process. And he, um, he sent it into Washington Superior Court. And that's, that's all I've heard about that at, at the moment. So, um, but they now have the, the record of the, uh, which included the minutes, the uh, CD, audio, audio recordings, the record of the hearing notices, um, uh, some other information that we um, spoke of during the hearings. Um, and uh, so the, the court has what it needs um, at the moment. And at some point, we'll probably hear about a court hearing. I don't know when. Um, so next on the agenda, any questions about that at all? Oh, 
Okay, so next on the agenda is the Village Street uh, project and the paving RFP. All right, so I sent you and Brian both a copy of the RFP. Uh, yeah. The thing we got to work out is the dates of when we're doing what and yes. who the prospective bidders would be. Mm -hmm. um, I put some ideas on there. I'm not sure if there was a, I couldn't find whether there was a requirement for how long that. I'm trying to keep the window rather short because I didn't want to end up where we were last summer where we were so couldn't get a right. goal done. I, I looked at the uh, RFP that Skip Lindsay put together for the school roof replacement. Um, and he had, um, you know, the date that the RFP went out um, was, and then the date that the uh, bids were required to come in uh, a month apart, 30 days, basically. That's about what I've got there. Okay. Yeah. Almost. yeah. And then, um, the uh, site visit was about three weeks after um, after the uh, the RFP went out. So and I've got it at two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. So the question was, do you want to extend it to three, and then only have a week between the site visit and the bid opening? Yeah. Let Just me, again, uh, if we we put it off, we'll be two more weeks out and put us into the second week in June. Right. You know, I I think we would probably be okay. Um, this, you know, this work would happen uh, quite a bit later, you know, depending on when we get the road construction work done. Yeah, I've got the RFP as a time frame. They have to get it done before the end of August. Mm -hmm. it, that was one of the concerns of getting too cold. Yeah. Indeed, doing pavement. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Skip had like March 8th for the, uh, the bids to go out. Uh, March 21st, which is, um, you know, about 15, two weeks, actually two weeks from when the bids went out. Okay, that's what I've got, yeah. Yeah, and then he had, a, and then after the, um, the site visit, there was about a week, I think, for questions to be submitted. Yep, which that gives another, well, I've got three days, we could add some time there. Yeah, and then the bids needed to be submitted approximately 30 days from when um, yeah from when so they, we're pretty close to that time frame yeah 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 um, let's see I, I in reading through the the RFP let's see I wrote a few notes um, so I wonder if um, in the scope and background if we just mention the length of the section of the Valley Lake Road, um, this is 1.1.1 at the very beginning. Um, it's um, a qualified contractor to engage paving of the Village Square parking lot and a okay, section of the Valley Lake Road. Maybe just mention the length of the section and the fact that it connects with Route 14 or joining Route 14. Okay. Just give a little more information on that. Um, and... Yeah, so we'll lengthen out the question and answer period a little bit. Um, so, and you yeah, had the mentioned- date, the, the dates aren't right in the body of the document. Right, the yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, because we, um, and then in um, on, on part two, under the 2.2, the bid opening, yeah. um, you have here that the Woodbury Town Clerk will open the bid and read the name. And, and you know, I'm fine with that. Um, and that's right directly from what Skip said, so we can do whatever we want there. Okay, I know you, my my experience with opening up the bids is um, they might have already been open, but the select board usually opens them up, you know, formally yeah. at the select board meeting, but it yeah. doesn't, either way works. Usually, so so my feeling is too, I think we should open them at the meeting, that way if they choose to attend, and that's all we really do at the meeting, we're just going to open the bid and announce the uh, cost, and that's the end of it for the night. Okay. It gives us a week to award or two weeks for every week to review the bids and awards. Mm -hmm. um, and then an, uh, under 2.4, um, the express delivery. I know that some contractors have been kind of screwed up in the past with that. Um, what happens is, you know, whether they send it FedEx or whatever, whatever delivery uh, company they're using, Sometimes they'll come and the town office is closed and they'll leave a sticker on the door. Um, and then depending on, especially, you know, the, the, 
the Thursday, uh, Friday um, thing, and and nobody, you know, nobody's at the town office to respond to them. So okay. um, it might be good to warn them that they use that um, to uh, send it good and early. But there's a phone yeah. ringing. And it might be Brian. Let me check it out. Hey, Brian. Um, so. Uh oh, Brian broke his computer. So Brian should be with us shortly. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, I think that was that was pretty much it. Yeah, because my thing on the FedEx, that's kind of on them if they don't get it there in time. Their yeah. other options just hand deliver it. I mean, that was the second question. One of the people that looked at it um, thought that having the bids to be let them be delivered at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a setup where they have to be in by a certain date. I don't know what our feeling is on that. And he said sometimes with projects this small, they don't want to make the multiple site visits. They're sometimes required. It's not worth their time. Yeah. Well, they um, aren't. Re they aren't required to be at the bid opening. No, but they could. They could if they want, of course. Yeah. Because what it has now is the bids would be due um, at a different date than the opening. Yeah, usually it's like the Thursday or Friday. Before so the question is, since we're not opening the bid, do we need to have them that day, or is it okay if we just had it be? Uh, we'll either have the bids in hand, or you can hand deliver it. Um, I don't have a strong feeling either way. So. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter to me either. If that's if some contractors have thought that that would be better for them, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll make the bids due at the opening if they're not there at six thirty on the night that we open the bids. Right. We'll yeah, we might want to let them know that um, they can't yeah. show up after we've. <laughs> nope, I've been down that road before. I think they can't show up after we've opened the bids. So you know they have to be they have to be there before we. Right. The bid has the to process. be there. If, if our bid opening's at six thirty, they have to be there at six thirty with the bid. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll adjust. Yeah, that. I'm fine with that. Okay, um, and then somewhere I made some notes. What what did I do with it? Here they are. So I just wanted to, um, you know, one of the concerns I have uh, about both the, the road work and the paving is that, you know, the whole um, construction season is totally out of whack with this COVID-19 thing. Mm -hmm. I think we should make our best effort to, you know, get these RFPs out and, and try to get, have this thing happen. But you know, it could just get, um, we could find ourselves not able to do this this year. I think I think we should just be aware of that. It's kind of an unknown from what I've been hearing about what's actually, you know, what'll happen for construction work. I, you know, it's a little bit encouraging in that uh, Governor Scott has opened up the, um, you know, the, the ability for contractors to begin work um, and I got I got a statement from VTrans which I think I sent to everybody that there are also any uh, VTrans funded projects that they are allowing the work to start on those so that's encouraging um, but um, uh, you know we I think we should just be but you know go for it and and hope that um, but be aware that you know that something could kind of fall apart with our yeah. plan my concern, I haven't got the plan back from the engineer. My gut feeling on this is that we should not go out to bid on the road portion and just go out to bid on the apron, the Valley Lake Road, and the parking lot because they're actually dangerous. Yeah. And need, need to be done because I have the same pro, uh, fear you have is that we're going to have a difficult time getting the road project out to bid, which I feel like we can get done this summer. But yeah. Whether we'll get it done in time where we can actually get it paved. At the same time. Right. Parking yeah. Lot. That's been my concern right along. Okay. So my preference would be to just not bid the paving of the road this year, anticipate not having it done, 
and just go ahead and move forward with the parking lot and apron um, just so that we can get that done because there's some big holes that are uh, problematic. Yeah, I think that that would be wise because there is, you know, um, and we'll, we'll get to this in a bit, but, um, you know, we had, I think his name is Bud Jones. He lives up in West Woodbury. He's a contractor. He's been uh, helping us a little bit with um, this parking area and for the town forest trail. And mm -hmm. he came down, he wanted to look at the, the gravel in the road down on Valley Lake Road. And, you know, he, um, brought up the question of the culvert you know i was talking about our summer mm -hmm. plans for paving and it really made me think that maybe we should get um you know that's when i contacted jaron um right but we should definitely have somebody look at that and you know if they think that we'd have to replace that in a you know a couple of years it probably is worth trying to replace that before we pave um the yeah. bottom of the valley and i road. share his concerns on the culvert that's the second reason why i hate to go spend money do a nice yeah. job paving that road, and then the following year we have to deal with a collapsed culvert. So my yeah. preference would be to just do the apron and parking lot. Let's pave now. We okay. will end up with a cold seam there, which is not a lot we can do. We mm -hmm. will know the elevations, I'm sure, by then of what they need to bring that apron to, uh, so it'll match the new road elevation or whatever that's going to be. Yeah. Be a massive yeah. change to okay. that portion, and then we can yeah. move forward later this summer with the regrading and the digging down of that road whatever we engineer it mm -hmm. yep. that'll give us another year to deal with the paving um and, and, and get that resolved yeah get that result I I think think that's probably doing, probably a wise screwed up yeah a wise way to proceed um so what else did I, just i had some other notes um let's see what yeah well those that was it pretty much okay yeah um so, and I haven't heard back again from um, the Better Roads, you know, grant um, for that road work. Um, I think I, the last time I talked or emailed Alan May, he mentioned May 1st. So I'll wait till May 1st. And if I haven't mm -hmm. heard anything, um, I'll send him another email because they, they have to let towns know, I would think. Um, I mean, I think they would have already done that. Um, who and who didn't receive those uh, grants um, so that they could do the work of, of uh, hiring contractors or, or whatever to, to get the work done this summer. So we'll see what happens with that part of it. Um, any, anything so the, else about the, the, the... What I'll do is correct this to just show the road and make those other changes and I'll fix the dates up. I'd like to try to get this process and get it out the door in the next week or so. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm fine if, you know, we've talked about the changes and yep. um, if, just do it and, and send it okay. out. I don't so, think we So who that. usually mails this? Is this something I can give Diana with the um, addresses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would work. Okay. I, okay. I've never done this before, so I have no idea how it works. Yeah. Is that, is that's, I think that's kind of what we've done before. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, Skip has been our RFP person right. the last few years. So what I was going to do is uh, pick three of the contractors and send the bid out to those three and see what we get back. Okay. And then I think we do, we do also have to uh, post it in, in a local paper. Um, okay. I can do that. That's right. Diana, Diana would know. Diana all the, would have to do it right. Cause they, well, yeah, they send all, bill. I can do it if they'll build a town. Yeah. I, Diana knows all the rules for that. Okay. And, you know, right at the moment on um, the Hardwick Gazette is, um, pretty much online only. So I don't know if we want to choose, I don't know what the other newspapers are. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so what I'll do so is I'll polish this up for tomorrow mm -hmm. or early Wednesday and then send it to you and Brian. Um, okay. You can just review it and I'll try to get it to Diane. I guess she, she'd be back at work. Um, if I didn't get it done by Thursday, by Monday, maybe. Okay. Is, maybe is the that... Times Argus would be a better place to advertise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And is that something you can do the mailing and the advertising if I get you the paperwork, Diana? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Somebody's trying to connect in. I don't know if it's Brian. Is it Brian? So, so um, anything else about that, the paving and the village project? Um, is everybody hearing heard heard from the. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Sorry, Greg. Is everybody hearing Paul? 
Yeah. Uh, he kind of fades in and out a little bit. Oh, maybe I'm too right. far away. It might be that. Hey, Hold Paul. on. Paul. Is that better? Yeah, that is better. better. All right, sorry about that. No. You know, Paul? Yes. Another thing is, um, yeah, you are fading in and out pretty bad. Um, and if you can check your microphone setting, um, it might be set to automatic, and that that might that might be making it worse. And if you can set it to manual somehow, and just leave it at a certain level, that's what I read anyway. Because yeah, your sound is going in and out pretty bad. Oh, okay. Like, let me see if I click that. Does that change it at all? It sounds good. Good, good right at the moment. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay. That sounds better. All right. Okay. So sort of related to the project in the village, um, which is why it's next on the agenda, is the town forest parking area. Um, you know, we've been talking about how much gravel will need to, road gravel, it'll be need to be removed um, from that area, you know, in front of the annex building. Um, and it just kind of... Uh, sparked a, a thought in my mind um, um, the, the, the parking the park. area. Am, am I breaking up? No, you sound good. Okay. Um, um, the parking park. area that, that we have, um, you know, kind of in the works for the town forest trail. Ha um, you know, it would be a close spot to the, uh, the excavation of Valley Lake Road for the contractor to dump the gravel. Um, and it would be, you know, a great opportunity to get that done. The, the catch is, of course, is that there would be, there would be some work that would be needed to be done to that area um, before. Um, we, the Conservation Commission, um, Paul Council and Jack um, Travelstead and, and myself met with uh, Bud Jones. He's been um, kind of helping us think about that area. Um, and we looked at the site, I think it was last week, or maybe it was the week after the last select board meeting. Um, and he estimates, what, what he's um, saying needs to be done there is that there are some trees that need to be cut and removed. Um, and then there's a small seep stream that comes down where the parking area would be. So that, that area would need to be excavated down, um, oh, I guess so that the, parking area would slope towards the back of the parking area and then the stream would be diverted by a ditch around that parking area um, and you know and then we would fill it in we'd need to fill in the um, what's excavated with a six 12 inch stone and then the gravel from the Valley Lake Road could go there but he estimates it would cost like five to eight thousand dollars to do that um, so it's just a uh, you know, it it the five or eight thousand dollars hasn't been budgeted in anywhere. Jack thought, well, maybe we could get a grant for it, but we probably wouldn't get a grant for it for this summer. Um, so it's just a thought. I don't. We we could discuss it a little bit. Um, uh, you know, it's something that if it could happen, it's it would be great. Um, but it would be a town expense to do the preliminary work. Uh, we'd have to hire somebody probably to drop the trees. There's three large pine trees that, that would need to come down according to Bud. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed to the idea of it. I mean, there's probably gonna be surplus material that Greg could either use on the road or maybe that's a good place to put it. Right. Um, one, so, thing, one, one thing that Jack asked, well, you know, could this be stored, the, could the gravel be stored somewhere and then you know, if there was some left over, could it be brought to use at the site in the future? Um, and I know there isn't much room at the town garage for storing um, gravel, so. We could probably find a place. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, it's just a, just a thought um, that I want to bring up. And I'm not sure if that's why Tim, Tim, are you, are you able to, to hear what what I just been discussing. Um, hi everyone. Um, 
No, actually, I was interested in the discussion about the Ainsworth Road was why I tuned into the meeting tonight. Okay, well, we're, we're getting there. Okay, all right. Okay. But I, all right. since you brought that up, where exactly, I was a little unclear about where the proposed um, parking lot is. Is it, it's down, can you be, can you be a little bit more clear? About well, I don't know how, how clear I can be in describing it, but um, were you there when we were looking at a, a previous parking spot? Did, did you, I know we had some different site visit kind of meetings and I'm trying to remember if you were there for those. No, no, I okay. wasn't. Well, it's, it's pretty, pretty soon after you get onto the, um, the farm road, um, there's a bit of ledge and there's an old, um, it sort of looks like an old cellar hole. There's a, a, a rusted car wreck right there. And, and there was like some old bed springs and stuff like that. And yeah. A, and, a, and a bit of ledge that sticks up. And we had sort of thought that we would, originally that we would use that um, old cellar hole, get rid of the junk that's in there and kind of fill that area in. Um, and then when, when this fellow Bud Jones first came and looked at it, you know, he said, well, you're gonna have to remove that ledge. And he felt that right adjacent to that, um, headed down the road towards your place, um, there's kind of a, a wet area um, and, and it drains into a culvert that goes underneath the road, um, just, be, just after the ledge if you're headed into your place. So, so it's right next to that spot that he's thinking of. Um, the, the road um, just drops down a little bit and then starts, it levels off for a moment before it drops down to get down to Route 14. So it's right in that, that short little level section of, of the road. Okay. Well, I, I guess two, 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 two areas of concern. And I think the, the first one has always been a concern that, um, that when folks use the parking lot, that they have the ability to turn back onto Town Farm Road and head back toward the village and not be forced to head over and turn around in our driveway or something similar to that. That would be our main concern. And, and that and, is part that is part of the thinking behind this this parking area that people would be able to turn around in the parking <clears> area and not have to drive down and turn around in, in anybody's driveway further down the road. Right, great. And then the second one was just um, is there any um, you know consideration regarding historic preservation with with the cellar hole there? Is that something we would have to concern ourselves with? Uh, we had a state archaeologist, you know, look over the forest. He was more concerned about um, Native American remnants, which he didn't find. He didn't mention the cellar hole at all. Um, and in fact, I'm not even sure if it's a cellar hole. It may be just a kind of a depression that was a convenient area to to um, unload some um, some, some junk. junk. Yeah. Well, it seems to me like it's all lined with field stone, as if it was a cellar hole. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, he the when the state archaeologist was here, he didn't express any concern. But we could we could ask that question again, of because um, um, we had to get we had to get um, well, I'm not sure kind of a clearance from the, me, from the state for. Um, I can hear you, Brian. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I don't know how to get video. <laughs> we, we appreciate the no video. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Almost there. Aww. You don't have to worry about your hair then. Um, I could check into that, Tim, if you like. Okay, thank you, Michael. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, uh, Michael, there it might be wise to stake out that area sooner than later, just so if people wanted to take a look at it. That could be easily done. So that's okay. easily done because that way you can say, "Hey, it's there. It is." If you don't like it, come mm -hmm. comment. Before we did any work there, I hate to do some work and someone's upset by it. They didn't right. get a chance to look at it first. Yeah. Good idea. We'll we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, anything else about that at all from anybody? And, you know, one of the other questions we had was we didn't know whether the road crew could do that work. Um, not the tree cutting, of course, but the excavating and the bringing in of the stone or whether we would, you know, hire a contractor. But I think what we'll probably try to do is um, do this through some a grant. Um, we, we are, the Conservation Commission is able to go before the same folks that gave us the initial amount of grant money to start work on the trail. 
um, which which will happen this summer, which which um, just now that we're on that. We summer. might even be able to get some donated time too from somebody with an excavator that wants to dig that out and right make save us some money. So I don't I think that's a possibility there. Okay, all right. So let's see. Um, so next on the uh, um, highway agenda, let me just kind of do a check-in on time. Yeah, we're doing okay. Um, so we have to make a decision tonight about what to do um, for the um, insurance claim that we have on the 4,900. Um, I did, the woman from Passive um, did say, you know, allowed us to, to, to uh, wait till this select board meeting to make a decision, but um, they're definitely waiting to and wanting to know what we want to do with that. Um, so, um, you know, that to me, right at the moment, for me, it seems that there are kind of two options and there may be, you know, some area in, in between, but we can, you know, we can take um, the, what we've been awarded for the, um, 4,900, which is about $17,000 and use that in whatever way we want. Um, or we could um, uh, put in a bid for salvage of the 4,900. And, and so far there haven't been any other bidders on the, um, on the 4,900. We could put in a bid and see if we could use parts from it and buy another um, used truck um, and kind of create a new a new truck out of um, out of the old 4900 and, and whatever we we could find to um, for like a cabin chassis um, and I know Greg has some ideas about that um, do you want to share those Greg a little bit you probably can um, tell that better than I would be able to well there's several options I mean you know we can Maybe find a, I found a 2011 International with blown motor in it. At one point, the, the truck was only $2,000. You know, not that that's going to come by again, but there's there's lots of options like that that do come by. Mm -hmm. Just a matter of deciding what, what should happen. Or do we just take the money and buy another truck? We need the truck now, I mean, for chloride. We need something to haul the tank around. That's that's the biggest concern. So we may just want to buy another used truck, truck, a cheaper one or whatever, and throw the tank in it and go. Or mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's several options. Yeah. You had mentioned that you tried getting the putting the tank in the five fifty. Would that yeah would that work? again? It's not big enough. You know. Oh, it's not big enough. Okay. The truck's truck's not heavy enough. It's a thousand gallon tank, uh -huh. you know. But you know, in a pinch, we could use it two or three hundred <laughs> gallons a time to to get us by. Mm -hmm. oh. So I had a question, Greg. I, I looked at what Callus and East Mount Player both use a trailer. And uh, you, did you talk to anybody? I didn't. I just uh, they, uh, noticed that they did that. <laughs> They well, one of, one of the issues I that we've got is we've got a lot of trucks, and so I was just trying to think of a way not to have to have so many. Yeah. Brian. Yeah. Did Did you want to say something? Uh, no. Okay. I just I saw your the light go around your your rectangle. So. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Something flashed there. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, what about the idea of taking this money and uh, using the money from this truck and the sale of the 550 to replace it with something like the 550 or or just a single vehicle from the two, whatever that would look like? Again, my concern is a chloride tank. Uh -huh. you know, having something to haul a chloride tank. Well, if, if we took sold the two um, and tried to get something that was big enough for the chloride tank, uh, whatever. Well, I mean, we what, need we need something to run around with too. You know. Mm -hmm. What's What's the issue with having a chloride tank on a trailer? I know you've you've spoken about you that. You can't before. turn it around anywhere. Uh huh. You know, it's a pain in the neck to turn them around. Mm -hmm. And you can't yeah. you can't see your your spray pattern or any of that. Uh huh. You know, you're you're just assuming that it's working fine. You, if something happens, you don't really, 
you know, you can't see back there. So, okay. Um, but, I, I mean, a trailer is a possibility, whatever, you know, it's like I said, it's whatever you guys decide. Mm -hmm. well, well, what do you think of the idea of, you know, taking the insurance money for the 4,900, selling the 550 and trying to get um, a truck that would be able to handle the chloride tank and, and hopefully do the salt work in the, in the uh, winter time? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know how much something like that's going to cost, you know. Yeah, we, we'd have to, you know, we'd have to just take a chance and see what we could find, I guess. Because right. for us, looking at the overall replacement costs of everything, if we can not have so many vehicles, it really helps us uh, with our annual costs. Well, we don't, the vehicle. we don't have, Paul, you know. We're, we're pretty limited. I mean, that's our spare truck. If one of the trucks breaks down, we're done. No, I, I understand that. But we also got to look at what we're spending every year on, on vehicles when we replace them. That's all. And it's been really, really handy, not only for the chloride, but as a spare truck. Mm -hmm. Something with a plow on it, because, you know, we never know when something's going to break down. And downtimes are, you know, that's what kills us. Do you, do you have a sense of what it might cost to get something comparable to the 4900, you, you know, used, of course? that we could set up with a plow? Um, yeah, it depends on the condition and quality and right. all that stuff. I mean, you can buy a cheap one or you can buy a good one, you know, it's, yeah. well, I'm we'll, sure, we'll, I'm sure we can probably find something. Yeah, what what do you think roughly would be the difference between uh, a good one and a, and a cheap one? I mean, let's look at a good one. We'll be up yeah, I, I, you know, they valued that one at 20,000, obviously, basically. I mean, they totaled it at 20 or 17 or whatever. Right. So you're looking at that to replace it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if we did that, what would we be looking at? Because uh, the 550 is pretty close to the end of its life, too. Would we be not, not replacing that in a couple years, or would we be wanting to replace that? Mm, well, we had talked at some point of replacing that with a pickup, even just a used pickup. Mm -hmm. just to do the running around with and stuff and you know the the replacement for that was the the low pro and that would what would you go to salting with again you know if we had a a smaller truck even a box sander you know just for salt i mean it only takes like a half a yard of salt to do the cabot hill and stuff you know it's mm -hmm. not a lot the salting is pretty minimal. Yeah. Right. What about the replacement of that of both of those rig with a 550 style truck with a flatbed in it? Um, the thought would be to put a, a a sander in the back in the winter and with the with the chloride tank fit on it in the summer. Right, but it you know again it would have to be something a little heavier than the 550. You know, for, you know what a thousand gallon is. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. The 550 is just not going to hold that. Right. We can carry about 500 gallons of water with uh, that size chassis with, uh, with right. other stuff. You probably do more with that. Than water too, yeah. So. yeah. so I know there's there are trucks that are, um, you know, a bit bigger than a 550. I, I don't know how Ford, Ford designates them, but. Um, right. And <laughs> yeah. There's, there's used ones around. I mean, it's just a matter of, of having the authority to go find one you know? well um you know if, if we decide to let the you know to take the insurance money for the 4900 um and sell the 550 we'll have a chunk of money um and then we'll just start start looking um, i mean there's a right here at the bottom of bunker hill in hardwick you know where that is mm -hmm. yes yep. where adam holbrook park, parks his stuff uh-huh he has he has a GMC there for sale for four thousand dollars. I haven't looked at it, know nothing about it, but it's that size truck that we would be looking at. Right, and you know you you and and Grizz have the mechanical know how to get something like that um, fixed up. Either whether you know you have somebody do it, or you would be, you would have the the knowledge to kind of ascertain what needs to be done to that truck to get it ready to. To go. Right. And I mean, there's 
the possibility too, I not some, you know, if we did get a box sander to replace the the chloride tank in the winter time, there's a possibility that we may able, be able to make that plow frame fit as well. Uh -huh. right, that was my thought with if we went with a 550 or similar style truck, we have a plow. Yeah. Yeah. That's heavier though, Paul. That's a no, I got plow. it. Yeah, you're talking about the bigger plow, right? Right. It's 11 yeah. foot plow. Because this kind of morphs into our like highway equipment replacement plan. Because whatever decision we make here, you're you're setting up for your next purchase with that a uh, smaller truck too. So we kind of need a whole picture. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And, and we do you know, have money. I'm trying to explain. It may look like a lot of trucks, but it really isn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we, you we know, do in have the money time, in the, we need them. Yeah. We do have money in the HERF fund. You know, if if the sale of the two trucks. Is not quite enough, or if there's repair work, um, whatever you know, we could we could. Yeah, this stuff is down the road as well, so yeah, we might just as well sell this truck and take the money from it. That's kind yeah. of my goal. We just kind of let the truck go to salvage and figure yeah. this yeah. other thing out. Right. Yeah, we right. got some and time this summer to find something else. Exactly, and you know we have enough to do. Yeah. Right. I, I hate to saddle you with uh, rebuilding a truck. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Which, you know, at some point, you know, we can look around or whatever and, and find something used maybe and just get by with a 550 for now forever long that lasts. Yeah, yeah, that you would know, be, it, how long before you'll need to be use, doing chloride, Greg? What's that? How long before you'll usually need to start doing chloride? Well, we're spreading gravel and I like the chloride fresh gravel, you know, new right. gravel because it's dusty. I mean, as soon as... As soon as this stuff dries out, I mean, we've yep. been really wet, but it's going to dry off one of these days. And, I hope. And every time we grade, it's dusty. Mm -hmm. So it'll it'll be soon. Mm -hmm. So does it sound like we're in, in a, agreement to um, take to the money and run? Take the money and run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess so. That's probably the okay. best way. And and we'll yeah. hang on to the five. 50 for now to, and use it for chloride. Um, yeah. Um, Even if you had to get a smaller tank in the interim, are they terribly expensive? Uh, I think they are, Paul. But okay, I don't know. They're no, about a dollar a gallon. That one, we, we put it in there and we drove the truck around. We test drove it around and it oh, seemed, okay. to be, seemed to be all okay and it's going to work and it doesn't look too odd. Just may not be able to fill it all the way. It's just we can't fill it. There's no way we can fill it. Okay, that's fair enough for a short-term solution, and, I guess. You know, three or four hundred gallons would do half a mile, maybe. I mean, if on a good day, he might grade two or three miles. We'd have to make a couple trips back and forth. That's all. Okay. And I look at this as a short-term solution. I do want to get this solved. Yeah. yeah. So That's probably the best option. I'll just just to take the money and, and we'll wait until we can solve it later. Yeah. Okay. All right. That sound good to you, Brian? It does. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds, seems like we're in agreement. Um, so I will let um, Susan Rowell at Passive know um, that tomorrow. I'll get, send her an email. Send us the money. Send us the money, Greg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and part, part of that money is, goes to the... Um, the record bill too so it's not we won't get the full 20,000 but yeah um okay so next on the list um so uh greater repairs and i know that uh, ted lane came and took a look at the greater um greg i'm kind of remembering you gave me some figures um i have a but you could again you could probably explain um what ted found and what he's uh, suggesting uh for work on the greater I'll, I'll give the floor to you or the square. Well, there's a, a few things that need to be repaired. There's, there's a couple of pistons leaking in it. The biggest thing is the the circle where the blade turns, where the mold board turns. That's got shims and, and guides in it. And those shims and guides need to be, the guides need to be replaced and it needs to be reshimmed to tighten that up. Hasn't been done for Oh, four or five years. 
and it's it's time to do that. So that's now, looking at the bit, it also talks about an oil change. Right, a transmission oil change because he rebuilt the transmission about four years ago there. Yeah. And the oil hasn't been changed in it. And I'd rather have him do it because you know he'll be able to tell you know more than we would ourselves, you know. That's the oil in the transmission you're talking about? Yes. Yes, okay. So you guys and couldn't drain oil it. In, as far as I know, the final drives have never been changed. Right. So that seems like something that you could do on a rainy day and then take an oil sample for him, couldn't you? We could do that, but he that you know, it costs money to send an oil sample in too. But he was the one that rebuilt it or had it rebuilt and did the work. I just felt more comfortable having him do it. Yeah. You have any but idea that was of a part, price? On that it? was part of the well, the, the price I'm looking at was uh, 5079 for the cylinder repairs and the blade, oil, and filters, and then 3600 in labor. So it seems like it was pretty steep. Yeah, and he called me back and told me that the 5000 was down. He made a mistake, and it was down to like 3600 or something like that. For the labor? But there's also, I didn't change anything because there's also the heater blower motors need to be replaced and he didn't have that on that quote so yeah. that's going to be some expense as well so it's going to be somewhere in that in that number and that's something you couldn't do either not really they're they're under the seat i mean we could do it i suppose but it's you know without it'd be so much easier if he did it because he's done it before so but the whole seat the whole interior has to come out of it well, with those numbers, my thought would be we'd want to have another person look at it and give us another quote because we're well into the almost ten grand range of repair. Well, it'll be it'll be way over that if Cat looks at it. I don't know of anybody else that works on Caterpillar. Ted is Ted would be cheaper. Like I can't think of anybody else that works on Cat. Yeah, I know Ted. Ted is sort of the go-to person to to do this work too. Um, oh, he'll be he'll be cheaper for sure. Mm -hmm. And the uh, wear ring is worn out, or is it something that's coming soon? Because when we talked about the grader before, we kind of thought there wasn't really anything wrong with it. A couple of minor things. Uh, I don't believe ever saying that. That that's, that turntable has been loose for a few years. It hasn't been done for. It was done when I very first started in 2013. So that's just tearing it apart and re-shimming it or replacing stuff? There's replacing that stuff. There's pieces underneath it that, that kind of like a brake caliper, Brian. Yeah. But that glides through and the, the guides in there are getting worn out and they can be re-shimmed and there's uh, Every other one, I think, is a guide, and the others are shims. Yeah. yeah. Now, is there a way to get a price breakdown of what all this stuff? Because the price we got just gives a flat-out parts. It doesn't give us a breakdown of what each thing costs. I can see if I can get that. That would he be helpful. Quote from, he got a quote from Caterpillar, so. Okay. Yeah, because it would just be helpful to see what, you know, what we're paying for each thing. That's all. All right. So later. Yeah. yeah. Because he's got it broken out parts and labor, but it doesn't really say what goes to what. Yeah, I can see if you can get that. Okay. That would be helpful to me just because to make a good decision. Because because things like changing the oil, it seems like could be done in the shop there. Um, although it may not be convenient, we could take an oil sample if they needed to, just if it saved a lot of money. If it didn't save a lot of money, then I would agree with you not to do it that way. Oh, we can do it. That's no problem. Right, but that's what I'm saying, just so we have a comparison, that's all, because I don't want to saddle you with a bunch of work and there's no real savings, you know what I mean? All right. And, you know, that's, he's there, why not do it? <laughs> but Yeah, just because I don't know what his shop rate is, if he's $79 an hour or whatever it is, some of these are that high, plus mileage and whatnot. Right. I'll get, I'll get that. I'll yeah, if we just get a breakdown of where the hours are well and, and the parts, the parts costs. I'll see what I can get. Perfect. Thank you. At least that's my opinion. I'm not speaking for the other two. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, Ted's going to treat us the best of anybody. So sure. I believe that uh, I, I can, I can get those parts and I can get prices right from cat. Yeah. Or maybe he has them already. He can just email them to us. Cause it looks like he's already put something together. Yeah. He must have his prices. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it should be simple to get is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, now that we we're going to stick with the old grader, you know, we, we do need to, Keep it running and and keep it um, yep. keep it repaired. So yeah. well, I I think I remember giving you guys an estimate of ten thousand, and you know yeah. this is under actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so no, I'm not arguing that. I just want to break down to the cost. That's all. So which he should be able to have. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, I'm sure he does. We'll get a breakdown and, and look at it again at our maybe hopefully at our next meeting. Yeah. Make a decision. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so you know we've we've talked um, the next item on the agenda, and maybe we want to either skip over this, but I did want to just have it on the agenda. You know we've talked about um, you know with the truck replacements, the grader, you know, and any any piece of equipment, just trying to work out a, a plan, which you know the best laid plans of mice and men and all, but. Um, Trying to start thinking um, down the road, long term, with our her fund, um, you know, just trying to come up with what we what we need, um, and coming up with a, a plan so that it, you know we can at, at some point get to this kind of golden space of actually having all the money we need to replace something, which is you know um, probably will take a while, but. Um, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on that tonight, um, but I just, um, I think that's a great idea. I mean, we've talked about it before um, in, in years past and there, you know, the her schedule that's been put together a number of different times is kind of addressing that. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we need to just start thinking about what trucks need to be replaced when what with. Um, so if we could just start thinking about that and, and you know, maybe there's some comments tonight, which would be fine. Um, just, I think, you know, for the a number of select board meetings, maybe we can spend, you know, a certain amount of time um, kind of working that out, discussing it and, and figuring out what we, what we want to try to do. Yeah. Well, they're just, the biggest thing, they're just going to start getting more and more expensive. Right. And in what way do you mean the, the repairs and, repairs, and yeah. everything? Mm -hmm. I mean, the longer you keep them, the worse it's going to be. Mm -hmm. It's starting to show up already. Yeah. yeah. I know Tom Fadden mentioned that to me with their, you know, when Hardwick kind of tried to work out this replacement schedule that, you know, they, they found the longer they, they used to replace trucks every 10 years, I guess. And they found that the last, three years of that, they were spending quite a bit of money in repairs. Um, so it just, it became obvious to them that they needed to replace them. They were actually spend less money re replacing them than repairing them in the long run. But, yeah, because I don't think the argument is so much uh, uh, replacing, it's, it's our funding is getting to where we can do this mm -hmm. at a reasonable time interval without having to borrow the money. Yeah. And there may be some pain involved in getting there, mm -hmm. just so we're because we're paying a lot of interest right now. So we may have to work through a solution that may take a few years to do, yeah. um, so that we're in a lot better place for future replacements. Yeah, I I know what Hardwick did when they were trying to get this in place, and it it is working for them now. They had one year where they went before town meeting. I think they requested a hundred thousand dollars to <coughs> put into their um, equipment replacement funds so that they could get to that spot where they could buy something outright and not have to deal with um, the, the interest for the loans. Um, it was a one one time thing, you know, that would be an awful lot to ask of people in Woodbury, but maybe we could ask for something less. And again, I'm not saying that we should do that. I'm just saying that that's what Hardwick you know, I was told what Hardwick did, and that may be something that um, that we could try on a smaller Woodbury scale. Um, <laughs> just just a thought. 
Um, the traps the aren't any cheaper, Michael, in Woodbury. <laughs> I, that's true. <laughs> yeah, well, just our, our pockets aren't as deep. That's the problem. Right? <laughs> what it takes to do that is to get them on a list and then write down when you're needing to replace them and what yeah. that replacement cost is going to be. Then you divide that out, that total cost of each vehicle over the replacement cycle, mm -hmm. put that at the end of the column, and then that'll add, you add that up, and that's what you got to put in the bank every year on yeah. top of whatever you're making for payments. That's the pain you got to – we just yeah. did that with the fire department, and it, and it resulted in us re reducing the uh, fleet size by one vehicle to get the uh, payment down to where it was manageable. It was not pleasant, mm -hmm. but it was manageable. Yeah. So, um, at yeah, this point, we, can, we own all the vehicles. Yeah. No, no, we have mortgages on uh, the loader and one dump truck. Uh, yeah, right? I'm talking about trucks. Yeah, the yeah. two, two of the, yes, that's correct. Two one dump truck mortgage and one uh, loader mortgage, I believe we've got. Yeah. And there's, a, there's a mortgage on the low pro. Yeah, right. Both yeah. dump trucks are done. Yeah. And of course, their warranties have run out too. That's but, the other, other that's part. the problem. But, you know, maybe, um, you know, Paul, with what you you guys at the fire department have learned and in, in, um, trying to set that up, um, uh, you know, maybe we should assign you with kind of coming yeah, up with try. that. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens there. But, well, the real rub becomes a replacement schedule, and I don't have a good answer because because Greg's right. At some point, you get to the law of diminishing returns with the vehicles. They start to cost more. Uh, yeah. than what they're worth to, yeah. to keep on the road. And I don't know when that is. Yeah. And it, the downtime is what really hurts us. I mean, right in the middle of a snowstorm and a truck yep. breaks, you know, it's awful. Yeah. And now yeah. we've got one less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, this will continue to be uh, on the agenda and we'll, you know, kind of let's move, try to, spend a little bit of time each select board meeting. Um, I'll work, work and see if I can get something together for the next meeting to look at. Okay. Okay. I know there's a start to one I have and uh, really you just gotta determine the cycle for each vehicle, how many vehicles we actually want. Sometimes that money number can help you figure out how many vehicles you can afford. Yeah. Uh, but that's a decision for us or the voters to make. Yeah. You remember Michael when we had to borrow Stowe's truck? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, just that was you know that was just the five fifty down. That was a five fifty, uh, yeah, yeah. And we had yeah, the same, it, amount, it, same amount of trucks then, but it does make it more stressful for the road crew when when you've got a snowstorm and a truck breaks down, and you know how do we how do you deal with that? Um, Thank God, so. still got us by. Right. Yeah. I'd like to <laughs> mention something. Uh, a few years ago, when Elizabeth Thompson was on the board, she had a pretty slick uh, uh, kind of uh, Excel spreadsheet of the, yeah. all the existing equipment and the lifespan and from year to year. You might want to mm -hmm. try to check with her to see whether that's something she she could have. She had that when I started work. Yep. No, I, I have. I have. I have, uh, I have paper copies of that, and then uh, Skip Lindsay. Kind of updated that some um, also. Uh, so we you have, have that in the Excel format, or is that just a paper copy? It's in the Excel format. I um, the the uh, her fund that um, Elizabeth put together. I think I only have that as a paper copy, but I might have it um, digitally also. But the the one that skipped it, I do have that. You send um, that to me because then we could work with that. Yeah. And we could put that on the next agenda because. Well, with Greg's input and whatnot, we'll put the dates down and we can just see what the numbers come out. Okay. And I, I could scan the one that Elizabeth did if I can't find a digital copy. And I can scan that, that and send that. That too. was a pretty good plan that she had going. I don't know whatever happened to that, why it got discontinued. Or well, that. What, what happened from my experience being on the select board is that the select board didn't really adhere to you got to follow it and fund it. <laughs> yeah, the funding for it. Um, there was there was one year when a significant amount of what should have been put in was not put in. Um, like you can't do that because you'll always end up behind in the future. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's, it's just kind of one of those pay me now or pay me later things. Yeah, it wasn't followed. So, and that's you know that's an issue for you know we can we as a select board can put that together and then whether a future select board. Correct. Six or seven years from now, you know, honors that and, and tries to keep following it. That's, you know, that's it's up to them. So, yep. um, but 
but we so, still a plan is a plan and, and we send it to me michael and i'll try to have it polished up uh by the next meeting and then we'll look at it once if we're we all sit and agree to the dates and times and the what's then we can put numbers to it okay i'll do that um anything else about that brian any any comments no nothing there no. okay all right so um Let's see the uh, summer work plan. Um, I know, Paul, that you you had mentioned that you would like to see a little bit more berm work and. Um, yeah, yeah, that was my only question. We kind of wanted to put a priority on berm removal. Yeah. Do, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, either. Well, we can do whatever. Okay. It just when we do berm removal, it takes everybody. Okay. Yeah. And so it cuts into you know everything else. But when we do it, I mean, it's just everybody's doing one thing. Yeah. So basically, we, a three three person the, job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two, in some areas, it's possible to get rid of them with just the grader. In some areas, it don't look too bad. Yeah, but it. The more you keep doing that, the wider the road gets. Uh -huh. You know, if you're just pushing it over the bank. To me, it's a lot better to just pull it in and truck it off. I know um, the road survey, um, there were some, and some roads that um, were designated for, you know, quite a bit of berm removal. I could, oh, like could dig that out and um, and see, see which roads might, do you have any roads in, in mind, Paula, that, that you've noticed, or Greg, uh, you know? I haven't driven around that much. Just looking at the survey, it's about 90% of the road. So if we're gonna solve something that has that much of an issue, we gotta get on it and make some headway every year. That's all. Well, a lot of it, you can only do one side. And most of it's against the ledges and rocks. Sure, but we can do yeah, what we, we can, can do. do the other side, but. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we could try to think of, should we the think county of county road, county road, Cabot road, East Hill, the, some of East Hill, some of that's not too bad. Yeah, some of the more traveled, the, traveled roads. The county yeah. road and the Cabot road are the worst ones. Why don't, why don't we um, designate I, those then? On the list, didn't I give you a list? I do, it looked like yeah, most of the was was in West Woodbury. What's that? It looked like most of the berm removal was in West Woodbury. It needs there was a little bit on the on the county road. Yeah, it needs it the worst up there. Yeah, in West West Woodbury. Yeah, yeah. All I'm just saying is is we just should be focusing on that and again. Just my opinion, just because that's what our, uh, our our road thing is telling us, you know, from the state. Yeah, there's there's some other things we have to get done first, but we can do that. Sure, I assumed it would be a something over the summer type thing. Right. And then the second yeah. thing, reading reading through that is as much of it that can be done while they grade, do that. And I don't know what that entails. It looks like if there's not a lot of grass, you can grade that gravel back in the road. If there is, you got to haul it away. Yeah, grass, you know, even just sod with no grass. Right, no right. But if it's just grade. gravel, like my road, you did a lot of work on. If he just grabs that edge and pulls it in, it's all just gravel right now. Right, right. And that's what it will be after we sure. you know, yep. berm it. But that sod and stuff just has to be correct. No, nope. that's what it says in the guidance too. Yeah. Just what we do, we suck it in with a grater, pick and it up and load it, load it in the truck, and haul it away. It goes goes away, and but it entails all three machines Jeez. and three people. <laughs> okay. Um. And then I know that, see, for brush cutting, I know Paul had some questions about that also. It, I know it's, it seemed like some of the roads that are designated for that are, are you know, just small roads like Willow Road that just goes into a few houses. Um, and, you know, we, Lynn um, Gallison put together a, a brush cutting list for us. Um, I don't know if I've sent this to you or not. I think I did, but um, Greg, I don't know if I sent it to you or not, but there might be yeah, some. You know, we're in the trucks every day. We're the ones that get slapped in the mirrors and slapped right. in the windshield. We know where to where to cut, you know? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
not sure who that is. I don't know. Um, all right. So most most anywhere, if you look when you ride around, you see the trees that have the ends clipped off. That's mm -hmm. from hitting trucks and mirrors and all that stuff. Those are the ones that have to go. Uh huh. So those are that's that's the ones that you've picked out and on the the work plan that you made for brush cutting. Right. Yeah. Okay. Those are the ones that bother us when we're plowing. They're laying in the road when it snows and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All that stuff. Okay. So again, it was just our focus. And again, Brian and Michael Gawain is working on these berms and as much brush cutting as we can get done along with your yep. regular grading. Yep. Yeah. Well, they can pick up if they disagree with me. <laughs> you know, it just it's however you want a lot of time. I mean, all the ditching would have to stop and all that stuff. Because mm -hmm. we had kind of thought we would do a lot less this year, right? What's that? Well, talking to Michael and uh, Brian, we had talked about we'd probably do less ditching this year because of it, that our focus was going to be concentrating on uh, good road grade crown and uh, dip berm removal and brush removal. Yeah, well, what, yeah. whatever you guys want to do. I mean, yeah. sooner that or was, later that comes, shows back up. Uh-huh. Well, that, yeah, well, that is what we talked the, about. I mean, our, big, our biggest enemy is water. Right. <laughs> And that's the problem with the berms is that when they're not getting them off the road, it's washing and making a mess. The same as the no ditches. So we're kind of up against it. Yeah. Oh, we, we do berm removal every year. I know. Uh -huh. It's just a matter of how much you want to do. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I know there are some ditching projects that need to be done. Mm -hmm. um, we need to finish the grant first. Right. That, that's the Chartier Hill, finishing the bottom right. of the hill. Yeah. Um, for the better roads, for the um, how long will that take you, Greg? Oh, at least a week, Brian. Probably. Yeah, that's uh, depending on. We the gotta weather. finish it and stone it. Um, we got some finagling to do to a culvert there for a driveway. The the landowner wants to buy another piece and add it to what we put there. So yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking a, a week, probably, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay. All right. So any, anything else about the work plan at all? No, I'm good. Okay. Brian? No. Nope. Okay. All right. So um, road commissioner. Um, well, we, we've been talking about this for a bit, um, and, uh, and and I guess, you know, maybe it might be good to just um, kind of review the, the thinking on, on why we're thinking about a, a road commissioner position or, um, or a roads highway supervisor um, position. Um, and I know, Paul, this is... This is something that you've been thinking about. You might be able to better, you know, sure. how to better explain it than I could. So we discussed this last spring or actually last fall, I want to say late last fall, because we're all finding that um, because we don't have a road commissioner, we have de facto the select board is the highway supervisor and in charge of all the road maintenance that takes place. Um, uh, per our discussions, and again, Brian and Michael, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but we're just finding it a struggle uh, for us to manage that. We all work full-time jobs and trying to, to do that and finding it really difficult. Plus, I think it's frustrating for Greg to have three people contacting him about um, what what goes on, uh, complaints and whatnot. So um, we had talked about and we actually did uh, put some money in the budget toward having a road commissioner potentially if someone was interested in that position to oversee the, the uh, supervision of the highway. You know, and that person would take the complaints and then talk to Greg and work with Greg on scheduling all those type of things. You know, there's a lot more to it. I sent along a job description uh, idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we did have someone that expressed an interest in doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's Brian, the crib notes. Yeah. Brian, do you have any comments? Uh, no, that's just okay. about right. Okay. The history of these is years ago, the road foreman or road commissioner was an elected position. Then it got, I sent you guys the history of it through the league there. And 
Uh, around 19, uh, they put it back in as uh, appointed, then in, it, or elected to appointed, then back to elected back in, uh, and then back to the appointed again in 72. So it's been a position that's kind of bounced around. Uh, and then that person is the one who reports directly to the town manager, the select board. And in this case, it would be the, the uh, select board, yeah. which would relieve us from having to do the day to day, you know, stuff. A lot of the stuff that you're doing, Michael, and other things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my thought on the road commissioner is, that, again, it would kind of relieve me of some of, of pretty much all of that, I would hope, or some of it anyway. Um, you know, I don't mind dealing with the grants and stuff like that, but um, I know lots of times people ask me questions or, you know, like when Lynn comes to the select board meeting and has these different um, issues, um, it's, I don't know the answers to right, them. Me either, and that's frustrating for everybody. Yeah, so, so we're thinking of, of someone who could kind of deal with um, people in town who have issues um, and work with the road foreman to, you know, like this work plan or whatever, just, right. you know, what, what things need to be done when, um, you know, with issues with uh, equipment, um, you know, it, it just seems like it could be a helpful, and it would really have to depend on the person. Um, mm -hmm. that, I would definitely feel pretty strongly about that. It has to be somebody that can work with the uh, town residents um, and also work with the road crew. Um, yep. In a thoughtful way. Somebody with a good background. In the yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And it would kind of take some of the the heat off you too, Greg. In a way, as long as as long as this person is somebody that the road crew can work with, that's that's a concern of mine. Um, no longer would the complaints go directly from us to Greg, it would go to the road foreman, a road commissioner, excuse me, right. who would take the heat or whatever's happening. Yeah. And, and this would be probably a pretty much a, a part time. It wouldn't be a full time. 40 yeah. hour. And that's what we mean. We have to talk to the person that's interested in work right. out what that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, do you have any thoughts about that, Greg? Oh, I think everybody knows how I feel about that. Uh -huh. I don't think I have to explain myself. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, that's that's why I gave you that paper, Michael. Uh-huh, yeah. I mean, uh, VLCT has been through all this with different towns. Mm -hmm. I don't think Woodbury is big enough to need two positions. Mm -hmm. They came up with one position, the road supervisor, and made that the position that some towns follow because some towns have a foreman, some towns have a road commissioner, some towns have both. They came up with this position as a way to avoid some of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, I guess that is something that we should probably try to figure out Do you know, um, what, you know, coming up with, I know Paul found uh, a job description for conflict for road commissioner. You know, we should figure out, you know, whatever we call this person or this position, um, you know, what is it that's needed to, to um, in, in this role to, as kind of a, a person between the, the road crew, you know, working with the road crew and also um, working with uh, town, town residents who have issues or um, just, another pair of eyes on what needs to be. Right, and that's, that's the idea, because we, we don't have the time to do this, nor should we be expected to in our position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he would work with Greg, and then he would report back to us at the meeting. Correct, that person would come to the meeting, in my idea, and if we got concerns, we deal with the road commissioner. Right. And Callis uses a similar position to this. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, we Cabot probably... just went through, Cabot just went through all this and yeah. it lasted about three months. Mm -hmm. Well, and I understand that there's an op, oh, go ahead, Greg, sorry. It created a whole bunch of anxiety and all that stuff. And the guy ended up getting done anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should talk to somebody from over to Cabot and see what the issue was over it's there. Ba they're back to the way it used to be and everybody's back to being happy again. Yeah. <laughs> I remember reading about some of that in the Gazette about a year or so ago, I think, seems. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't well, heard of that. It just happened, I think, this winter that it finally, they switched over last year, yes, but it finally came to an end this year. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Yeah, it would be good to hear, you know, what yeah, happened. My right is that we have a person. The, right, the wrong person gets too much authority, and then all of a sudden everything changes. Well, the problem is they still have a boss because we're the boss of that person. Everybody has a boss. Yeah. My well, thought process in this is to. It, we it should, didn't work out for them, put it that way. Yeah. And that may be the case with us, but. Um, so you kind of know where I stand on it. I kind of think it's a good idea to try. Uh, my recommendation would be to meet with the person that would like to do it and have this conversation with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm I, thinking that we should really try to come up with just what we want. I mean, we should come up with a, jo a job description that works for Woodbury, that in yeah. you know, the situ situation that we're in. And really, if we're going to be looking for someone to fill this role, we we really should put it out um, you know, yeah. to see what interest there is beyond the the one um, person that has expressed interest in it right at the moment. We we should um, you know do a search, um, however however involved that is. Um, and I, th I would prefer that process that, that we you know have. Look for yeah, possibilities. Check other towns that have done it and see how the other towns have worked out. The ones that have uh -huh. kept it or the ones that have gone away from it. Yeah, we could do we could do some calling around for towns that are similar in size. But I, I think you know the first thing that we really need to do is come up with a, a job description for a road commissioner or a highway supervisor, whatever we want to call it. Um, or what a road we, foreman. What What do we actually want that person to to do and, and um, and how you know you figure that part out? Mm -hmm. so. Would we do that at our next meeting, or did you would you want to meet at a executive session to try to figure out some of that stuff? Or no, we 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 really couldn't meet in an executive session to figure out a job description for a road commissioner. We could you know we could work on that. Um, you know, I know Paul has ideas about what's needed. You know, we could work again. Here, I, I am giving you more work to do, Paul. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking that done in two weeks. I mean, we do have a person that's written in and expressed interest. I think it would behoove us to sit down and meet with that person. Uh huh. Um, separate. Uh, I mean, separate that would be an executive board. session thing at a select board meeting. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we could do that at our next meeting. Um, I mean, I do have some issues with that person or just some concerns, I should say, they aren't issues, I have some concerns. Um, and it would be good to be able to talk about them um, or, you think with, with, that, them. with that person in, in a non-public setting. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay, well, um, we can plan that on that for our, it'll be a little tricky next. So here we are, you know, we're still having to do these Zoom meetings. Um, does that person have the ability to to be well, they letting us meet with groups up to 10 now or um, are they not, doesn't include us well i mean we could meet we could have a special select board meeting in executive session we could do it at the library community room and still keep our physical space yeah, yeah that's what i would recommend just to talk to this person in, in between our meet next meeting Okay. Um, well, why don't we plan on doing that then? I don't see why we couldn't. We could do that that safely. Um, I would ask that everybody wear masks um, at this meeting, unless we get some kind of, um, you know, yeah, that's pretty much the guidance now. Everybody's wearing a mask. Right. Yeah. So um, as long as we do it safely. Um, and keep the physical distance. The the community room will allow us to do that. The, yep. The town office won't. Um, yep. So, um, okay. So we'll. Do you want to set that up in the next week or so? Yeah, I will. Um, I'll. What, what would be a date that would work? I guess we should probably think about that. Uh, anything but Friday at one or two, Thursday at eleven. Right now, my only two other meetings I have this week. Next week, it's the same thing. All right. And I'm good most any time. Okay, I have a my now that I'm doing some work on my schedule is a little more restricted. Um, let's see, I could do it. Um, let's see, I could do it on a Monday morning. Tuesday Tuesdays are an open day, and Fridays are open days. So um, 
And then Wednesday well, next, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Okay. What time would everybody prefer? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. All right. A.M. or P.M. Yeah. A.M. <laughs> A.M. Eight A.M. Tuesday the what? T U E. It'll be the fifth. So, Greg, would you like to be at this meeting also? Um, I don't know. Maybe Michael. Okay. You know, I had some real concerns about this stocking and stuff that I, that well, I you, talked to you about. Well, why don't you watch? That stock, would be executive session mis material. Misrepresented and all that stuff. Okay. Well, we could that could be a part of this meeting also. It probably it probably should be before it goes goes any further. I mean, we're all sick of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, the select board needs to hear that. Um, right. So that'll be a part of this. We could either have it in two stages or this person that's interested in being. I think it'd be better to meet with the board individually over okay. uh, two different people. Okay. All right. So. Um, Let's say what the, let's say Greg that we would meet with you at 8, 8 a.m. so that you could get on to whatever you need to do for the day, and then we'll meet with the other person um, afterwards. And when is this? Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday the fifth. Tuesday the fifth. Yep. So, so the first one would be at eight, and the second one would be what? Eight thirty nine. Uh. How much time do you think, how much time would you want, Greg? No, I don't think it'll take long. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, maybe 8.30. Okay. All right. There's, there's some serious, serious issues there that's documented and everything. Okay. All right. Well, um, we'll, we'll give that and, select You know, it's, it's to the point where it's, it's harassment. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's hear about it next Tuesday. Okay. I mean, I know I know some of it already, but um, Brian and Paul don't. Anything else uh, about the road commissioner at all? Can I just ask if you guys have a considered maybe some kind of a liaison position that could do some of the um, dealing with the public and the road crew, and also. Well, that's that would, be one, that, would be, that would be part of what the road, whatever we call it, the road commissioner would be doing. They would definitely right. be in a liaison position. I'm just wondering if that position could be, because um, it seems like the guys kind of know what they're doing. So if there could be somebody to fill in the gaps to take that space between the select board and the road crew and not have to be as involved as you know, directing them, telling them what to do, but maybe helping them write work plans, you know, things like that, supporting them rather than overseeing them. That's, that's exactly what this position would do is what we're looking at. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not looking for an overseer. We're looking for somebody that can be supportive. So, you know, obviously they would have to be able to work with the road crew and, and also to be able to deal with um, the public. Correct. So it would take a, it would take a, Fairly special person, I think, to be able to do this. Her name's oh. Laura. Yeah. There you go, Laura. Well, my you hand apply. Is <laughs> Lost my other part-time job, so I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. But, yeah. All right. So yeah, so this is something still in the works. Um, we'll we'll proceed. Um, so uh, just very briefly, uh, the Ainsworth yeah. Road. Um, there's a lot more to it that I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, the main issue for the town is the fact that um, that old house that's been sold, there's been a crew working on um, making it uh, a, li a livable uh, house. And what they've been doing, um, at least last week, is parking right in the road so that the uh, people who live up the road couldn't get by, anybody wanting to use the road couldn't get by. And when a person would stop to ask them if they would move the truck. They were very uh, severely verbally abused and, and threatened um, to the point that uh, one person in town, an abutter um, of that property, um, 
so I think I'm pretty sure he spoke to Brian. He also spoke to me and he has threatened that the next time that he goes there, he's gonna be packing a gun. Um, and that's what got me really nervous. So, um, uh, and that's that's the kind of the main issue for that, that we need to be concerned about is the fact, and I haven't, I, you know, I drive by there pretty much once a day, twice a day. And um, I did see trucks in the road last week. Um, this week, I haven't seen any yet, but it's only Monday. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, I called, um, I called the Washington County Sheriff's Department to talk about this. I also called the state police. Um, and um, the Washington, I asked the Washington County Sheriff's Department that when they're in Woodbury, if they could at least go down and look at the road and if they see a truck parked in the road blocking traffic that they stop and either give the people a citation or at least a warning. Um, Good idea. And, also, and uh, when I called the state police and mentioned the person involved uh, with these uh, 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 verbal, abusive, you know, threatening to, to beat the guy up and throw him in the ditch kind of thing. Um, and I mentioned who the person was doing this. The state police told me to not have anybody in town deal with this uh, person. Um, and then if there was somebody parked in the road that the state police need to be called and they would send the nearest trooper there as soon as they could. Um, so, and to, to me, that is the more, um, you know, the issue of parking on the road is one thing, but the, the kind of threatening um, aspect uh, with the people involved is, is, is probably a greater concern for me anyway. Um, yeah. And the state police sound like they're willing to, you know, get there as soon as somebody is called. So um, I think for, you know, for any of us, and I've spoken to one of the property owners, um, above the house um, who will often, you know, is working at home home now, but if there is, he's on the fire department. If there's an emergency that he needs to get out, um, that road needs to be clear so that he can get there as soon as he can. Um, and I, you know, so I've mentioned to that property owner, I need to call the abutting landowner to talk to them about this situation. I haven't done that yet, but if we see anybody um, with a truck fully parked on the road, truck in a trailer, whatever, um, don't deal with it yourself, call the state police. Um, and the trooper that I spoke with um, the most was a trooper named Trooper Merriam. Don't know his first name, but he's aware of the issue. He's also let the other uh, troopers in the Middlesex barracks, they're aware of it. And it sounds like they would um, get there, you know, as soon as they could. Um, they, don't, they don't want anybody from the public or anyone, town officials, uh, dealing with this person. He has a, a pretty, um, well, they don't want us dealing with him. They know his record. Um, yeah. So that's, that's all I really want to share. I also talked to Ryan McCall, who is the uh, enforcement um, oh. branch of the um, Department of Environmental Con Conservation. He has... Um, our zoning administrator called him about issues with that house um, and a property across the road. Um, and um, he has, um, he will be making um, a site inspection. Um, originally, um, again, he kind of passed that off onto somebody else and um, they didn't want to go there. They want to <laughs> deal with it. No kidding. So he, he's probably going to be the one that will go. He's going to get, last time he went a few years ago, he had a couple game wardens. A couple of years. That's good. So um, that's kind of in the works. Um, uh, right now we can't do anything about that house because no one is living in it. But there are some issues that he's aware of for that house. So, um, and that's pretty yeah. much all I want to want to say about Okay. That. For now, any any thoughts at all? And again, we shouldn't mention any names, although we probably all know who I'm talking about. Yep. Um, but but no names should be mentioned. If <laughs> I tried to have, I thought we could maybe do this in executive session, but VLCT um, advised me that it really wasn't a subject um, for executive session, and as long as we discussed it, not using any names, that we would be okay in a public setting. 
Any comments from anyone at all? No. 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 Okay. Um, so, Greg, would you like to give us a brief um, update on this on the road situation in town, and and then we'll we should move on to some other stuff here. Uh, today I hauled like uh, two loads of gravel up on the Cabot Road, and we've got some of that graded. We're going to finish that up. Hopefully tomorrow the weather's not supposed to be too bad. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow and Wednesday, maybe on the Cranberry Meadow and East Hill. East Hill was still pretty wet. Uh -huh. it's still spongy, the clay in it and stuff. So yeah. that may be, you know, we might not get there this week. But mm -hmm. definitely Cranberry Meadow can be done and we're going to finish the Cabot Road in the morning. Okay. Yeah. And the, the mud up on East Hill, it, it hasn't really turned to muddy ruts. It's just the kind of right, it's just spongy. Spongy, yeah. It's been pretty good. I mean, we haven't had really any deep ruts or anything anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's come out pretty gradual. But East Hill, the same as last year's last again, and it, mm -hmm. it's hanging on. So I haven't pulled posters down or anything yet because it still is kind of loose up there. Okay. They could probably come down most any time now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any any questions for Greg at all about? Just add one one comment. If um, you might not be aware, there's a quite a heave on the county road uh, just past Cranberry Meadow before you get to that house where the guy has the pile of logs. I don't know if right. that's something you put a couple warning signs up at, because we almost hit that with the fire truck the other day, and luckily we slowed down before it hurt somebody. When was that, Paul? Because that's all been graded. Okay, it was Saturday. This last Saturday? This last Saturday, yeah. There's uh, quite a big bump there. As in day before yesterday? Correct. Really? The grading looks uh, like it stopped at Cranberry Meadow. They didn't look like that hill had been graded. But okay, anyway. It, it was up on the hill? No, no, no. You know, you go past Cranberry Meadow and there's that house that has a pile of logs on the right and there's a garage across the road. He's got right. tractors and things there. It's just before that house on the far corner. If, if we can't get them graded, just go put a couple warning signs up. I, I assumed it was graded all the way to Logtown. Yeah, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah, if I you don't have know, time to I get, didn't know yeah. that. Okay, yeah, I was, I was going to email you and I forgot, but if you don't have time to get there, just throw it. They could throw some warning signs up because we almost hit that at 35 miles an hour. That wouldn't have been good. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't aware of that. I assume I thought right. it had been graded all the way to. To log down. Yeah, no, no. Halfway Even just, yeah, if you can't get to grading it, just put some signs would be great. Yeah. yeah Thank you. We'll get over, we'll get over there either. Is it something we can just knock off with a loader? Well, I don't know. But if you don't, it just even just mark it so someone won't hit it like we almost yeah. did. Yeah. Might not it might be frost. I don't know if it's fixable right now. You know what I mean? Right. And that may be what happened too. It may have yeah. just popped up. Afterwards. Yeah, who knows? It's right where I think a culvert is. So if, even if just a couple signs, just so we don't yep. hit it. Yeah, or cones or whatever. Something, yep. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't aware of it. Nope, I didn't figure you were. That's it for me. Okay, Ryan? Nope, nothing else. All set? Okay. Um, great. Well, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Yep. yep. So um, the next thing on our agenda is a uh, uh, grand list deadline extension. Um, and I can read you briefly what um, a letter that was sent to the, the listers from the Department of Taxes. Um, it's, it says basically due to the COVID-19 impacts on operations, an extension of all towns to August 15th, 2020 is hereby granted and applies to all um, acts mentioned. Um, and then there's another extended date um, to uh, September 15th, 2020 um, for the, for getting, you know, the grand lists in and they would like, um, the, you know, this was sent to the listers and, and they would like to the, the select board to improve those, um, approve those extensions. I mean, we usually grant extensions anyway, because it's hard for the listers with our large um, camp owner population to, to get a lot of properties. Um, yep you know, crazed in, in time for the August 15th date. 
So um, this, this extension um, would go out to, um, to, would extend the date till September 15th, 2020. Uh, are we, is that okay with everyone on the, for this, on the select board? Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, so I'll just, you know, for the, for the record, I'll make a motion that we approve the extension for the uh, grand list um, being sent into the state until um, September 15th, 2020. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Okay, so I'll, uh, that I'll delay when we can send tax bills out. I don't think I'm sure it's going to mean that the, they really need a delay, but I mean, they always need a delay till maybe the middle of July. Sure. But okay. The state is doing this backwards this time. They're suggesting that everybody get an extension so they don't have to deal with all these different uh, requests. Okay, fair enough. Okay. okay. Um, so moving on. Um, <clears throat> Susan um, Martin, you know, we, we, I think it was last fall, we were talking about the um, changing and uh, revising the zoning permit. So um, Susan has done some more work on that. And I, I think she has a, a, a final copy that she would like us to review and approve. Um, Susan, are you still with us? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, do you would you do you have any comments at all for us to consider? Yes, and 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 Bob, the zoning administrator, is here with me. Oh, good, good, okay. And what I have done is I have taken the application for zoning permit that was on uh, on a typewriter and made it into the twenty first century. And it wasn't on a typewriter. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was. Come on. But anyways, um, it's the same one that you looked at in November, yeah. um, except for it took out um, the short-term rentals language uh, mm -hmm. that I think the, the consensus was that it needed to go through the planning commission. So right. that type of language was is out of this application for zoning permit. Now, the main reason why I really want this to be done because I can hear the frustration from my husband about um, about the cost. About what? The cost. Uh, uh, right now, it's going oh, through cost. a lot of applications. Okay. A lot of applications, and I, I believe I, I asked the select board to approve the 10 cents per square foot for new construction. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly don't believe if there was ever a motion that was made to approve. But what I'd like tonight is on page three of the application, and I hope you all have a copy of it looking at it. I don't. Uh, be approved. Okay. What, Susan, what I would like to do, I, I contacted VLCT about this, asking them if they would do a quick review of it. And they, they said oh, that they don't, they, they don't really, they don't really do that, but the, they suggested that I send it to the Regional Planning Commission. Um, so um, what I would like to do is um, just send Michael, it. Yes. Michael, we yes. have done this. You have done We that. have done this. Okay. Okay, and, good. And I am just, I, w this town is losing money because the, this select board will not approve the new uh, rates. Oh, yeah. All right, my husband says to calm down. I have a we need to prove it too. I, I didn't realize that um, the Regional Planning Commission, I know Skip Lindsay, who's the chair of the Planning Commission, said that, that he thought this was okay. Um, but, and I didn't realize that it had been um, reviewed by the Regional Planning Commission. But if it has... Everybody... Yes. If it has, then Everybody I, I should, have... Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, Michael. No, I'm just okay. really go frustrated. Ahead. I'm just really frustrated, and, and I shouldn't be, I guess. Um, they didn't let us know about. We always put in the square footage of the first floor 
And if we called it a two story, it automatically added it up. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. So we had to do it ourselves. And and that uh, that square footage, uh, you know, that doubles the uh, <laughs> the amount. And there was one place we just that just gave a permit for it's thirty two feet by 40, 48 feet. Two mm-hmm. story. Can I get in the middle of this for a moment? It sounds to me like Why, sure. uh, Bob, Bob and Diana and Susan, it sounds like you three should get together and kind of work out some of this and um, and come I, up with I thought another... it was all done. Yeah, I thought it was all it... worked out and done, but now we're getting something else. Yeah, no, it wasn't I, all done. I, it was thrown out. Yeah, Susan did throw it out uh, several months ago, but it just never got followed up on. And I don't, I wonder whether the Planning Commission has, is approving, is, you know, making this proposal or whether well, it's just Bob and Susan. It's Bob and Susan, basically, but Skip Lindsay did look at it and okayed it. So, but the Planning Commission. I am Diana. I am only asking the select board to approve the rates, which they legally have the right to do. I'm not particularly asking them to to re, to approve the um, the language because the language really hasn't changed, except for a few housekeeping mm-hmm. rules. I, I I feel like you're fighting us on this. I'm just trying to bring more <laughs> revenue into the town. Yeah, so we can pay the zoning administrator. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whatever. <laughs> uh, but That's I agree, good. Michael. Michael, yeah. Michael, yes. I agree. Uh, Bob and me and Diana, uh, and maybe maybe Ron should get around a, a round table uh, with mask on and and discuss this. But in the meantime, I would truly like. And I would like to make have you make a motion that the select board approves the rates found on page three of the new zoning application permit. Okay. Well, let, let One me more ask thing. It, I would suggest if you really want to, that a lot of these last year, probably more than half of them wouldn't even have come up to the $25. So um, if you want to hit up somebody who's building a big building, you know, for two or $300 for a permit, that's a choice that I think has to be discussed. But a, but to get a permit for $3 doesn't make any sense either. So, you know, maybe you should at least have a $25 minimum. Yeah, that would be things a good like idea. sheds and garages and uh, porch extensions and things like that. Okay, could, no, that because be there aren't idea. that many new buildings built in Woodbury every year. Is an average of one or two, maybe three in a big year. Okay, could, could and Diana, could you allow the select board to discuss this? Is that okay? Go ahead. Okay, so, Brian and Paul, any thoughts on on what we've heard? Uh, it sounds like it needs a little bit, like with the minimum fee added to it potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and we might, I'm not opposed to raising the fees, uh, but I do think that it might be wise to put it out for some public comment before we did it. You don't need that. By law, you don't need to a public comment on well, I, changing I, I the rate. Right, I understand big, that, but well, it affects what? everybody. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, my, my, Bob's trying to hold me down. But he is looking, I mean, <laughs> he's been every single day for the last four weeks on the phone talking about permits in Woodbury. No, not just Woodbury. And, well, he's doing he's, cal- he's doing callous now. But, but in, in Woodbury, he has had a lot of discussion. And the town of Woodbury is losing money. If you guys don't approve at least this, what I have now, and then your next meeting we can come come again and and make another change. But it's imperative that that you make these changes now before there's another influx of permits coming into the town. I'm sorry, you don't want to make revenues for the town, then we'll, we'll just table it. Yeah. Well, I, I think the, we just have questions about it that, and um, yeah. so I'd rather feel pretty clear and, and confident that what we're doing is the the decision that we make is the right job. one. 
and it's, right. it's a finished job. But it's been six months, and uh, I think uh, there's been some permits, and uh, there's probably going to be some more, and it it, it uh, might as well finish it up. And there's not that much that's really being changed. Well, it sounds it sounds like you're close, and and um... oh, there's not that much that's really being changed, and. I just wish we could get together on it and finish it. And I thought we were well, done. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how the ball got dropped on this, but, um, you know, I guess it would have been helpful if, if there were still issues that you felt needed to be resolved that um, that you brought them to the select board. And, you know, yeah. I, I don't I can't remember why it, it wasn't pursued further, but. Um, I mean, I'm willing to, if this is the final product, I would just like to put it out to the public and we would vote on it at the next meeting. That would be my opinion, which is two weeks away. Mm -hmm. It's only going to have yeah, a big impact on somebody who's actually building a new house. Yep. And they're going to, instead of, or a big garage, instead of $25, it'll be a hundred or $200. So. Yes. I just don't want to have someone at, mad at me because we didn't say what this change to the application was because it's not really clear in the warning. If we give it a couple of weeks, let people look at it and we'll vote on it at the next meeting. That would be my just if you're happy with the way it is right now, that just delays it two weeks. Yeah. I, I think that uh, just the, like Diana suggested, uh, having a minimum uh, so there aren't three dollar permits. That yeah. does sound like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I agree with yeah, that. That's easy to and, um, and uh, well, I, I like the Paul's law gives you, the law gives you, Michael, the right as a select board to approve the rate. That's that's oh, great, man. but I, you know, I kind of agree with Paul. There's the law, and I also want to make sure that the public is aware of these changes. The public, meaning the town residents, and that if there are any yes. issues, that they have a chance to speak to them. That would that would be what would happen in any kind of planning. The process where you know there are different public hearings you know if we post this down at the in the usual places where we post it the whole thing and um if there are issues we'll hear about them we, we could even have them be addressed to you and bob um if you'd like um to, to me that would be just we to be thoughtful to the people in town so if they get that out tomorrow in whatever form they want We'll review it at the next meeting and any comments that we get, and then we'll act on it. And you can just that hang be, on to that, the permits, Bob, until a decision is made, if you want. Fine with that. <laughs> so we're only yeah, talking about two weeks. Yep. Yeah. And if you want to meet with Diana and kind of hash out some of the things you were discussing, that's fine by me, too. Well, I think, yeah, we should, yes, definitely. We just got to, if you want us to vote at the next meeting, we just got to give people a little time to look at it. So the sooner you get it posted, the sooner we can act on it. I know where to find her. <laughs> okay. All right. That's and, good. You know, Laura can help um, get it posted. Um, Brian, did you have a comment? No, that's so, fine. Okay. All right. So does that sound like a plan? We'll make a decision two weeks from now. As long as we get it out, we got to get it out this week, though. Yeah. You're suggesting that they post the whole thing on Front Porch Forum or something? The yes. The and, any, any of the forums that we use, Front Porch Forum, the website, the um, Facebook um, page that the town, some people in town have. Any way that we can get it before the, the town residents. Just make sure that they understand that the, the fee change. That's what, I'm not concerned about the application. It's just the fee change letting people weigh in on it. The only thing, look, Michael, the only thing that I really, really want to happen is that this zoning permit be posted on our website. Okay. Absolutely. We, we're getting a lot of calls from people out of state, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, asking us can can we download this from your website? Yep. And it's like, uh, no. You can mail it. <laughs> I can mail it to you. It definitely, definitely should be on there. In the mail. Gee. You know, mail it to them. Or Diana, we, we need to put this on the website. Oh, uh, it should go on the website. Yeah. Okay. Can 
Do we, does it sound like we have a plan? Can we move on? I, I'm good. Yes, thank you. I'm good. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your work on this, Susan. Yeah, thank you, Susan. We didn't Bob. do it tonight, but we, we will. Well, thank thank you for your, your patience. Thank you right. very much. Right. Love you guys. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, next item agenda is uh, town official appointments. Um, I asked Laura to post uh, the different town official uh, positions that are still empty. And we um, got a few bites when, when she did that. Um, All right. We got some response, two responses about the health officer, um, one response about the constable, um, and then also a response for a representative to the Central Vermont Fiber. Um, I haven't heard back from the people I and I spoke to these folks, uh, sent them information about, you know, especially with the health officer and the constable, I sent them what information I knew was available about what those positions entail. I haven't heard back from them yet, so I don't know what that yeah. means, but I'll contact them again in a little bit. Um, we do have a person that's very interested in, in being the Woodbury representative to the Central Vermont Fiber um, Board. His name is Trevor Thorpe. He's recently moved to Woodbury um, and he's kind of the IT person for um, the Vermont, um, uh, I don't have the email, but it's um, the, um, it's not a bank, but it's the Vermont, um, where they lend you money and it acts sort of like a bank. Um, it's a, a state, um, I'm blanking out on the name, it's too late um, for my brain to be working very well. But anyway, he's very well qualified and I think he would actually be very helpful to that entity. So um, I would like to make a motion that we appoint Trevor Thorpe to be the um, representative for Woodbury to the uh, Center of Vermont Fiber Board. I'll second that. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll do a follow up with the other folks and um, just see what they're what they're thinking. Um, um, now, is this the position that uh, Skip was? Yes, yeah, Skip at? and Skip and Skip was the representative, and and Susan Martin was the alternative. And then when Skip um, resigned from the being the rep, um, Susan became the rep, um, okay. and then. She has also stepped away from that position. All right. So, okay. And this fellow is ready to, to take it on. So that's great. Yep, need a new one. Okay. Um, and then the last thing on our agenda, other than quick, the other two, we'd look at at the next meeting, maybe when they got some more I information. Hope so. I, ho I hope okay. to have, um, you know, the constable, um, I don't want to get into it too much, but that's. No, I get that, but the health officer. Yeah, the health officer, um, one person, once they heard that someone else was interested, said, well, let that person take it. And um, so I, I will get in touch with them um, probably okay. sure. we can later go. this Come week on. and just see what they're thinking. Um, so who was the person that was trying to be the health officer? Well, um, I don't know. If, I, I don't know if I want to publicly say their name until they're okay. actually yeah. sure that they want to do it. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. There were two people involved. One of them... Um, they both lived in Woodbury for a while, so. Um, yeah, maybe I'll call you tomorrow just to see who it was. Yeah, and what I what I mentioned to, um, especially the one person I mentioned that, um, you know, I sent them all of the material that the health department has about being a health officer. Um, and I gave them Jay Copping's name. He's the yep. Callis health officer who helped us out with the, the residents down on Dog Pond Road that, that you know about, Brian. Yeah. Um, and I also mentioned mentioned you. So um, yeah. Um, um, so the dog pond road is done. As far as I know, it's done. Okay. Yeah. I haven't heard anything lately, so I didn't know. No, I, I signed some final papers with Jay um, a while ago. Okay. Um, and you know, I've driven by there and kind of looked. And there are people living in the house now, but I think the trailer, um, I think the trailer is empty. Is empty. Good. <laughs> Finally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the last thing on the agenda is a local emergency management plan, and I'm going to be very brief about this. Um, we need to renew that yearly, and the date to have it that work done is the May 1st. Um, we've been to, spoke to Chance about this, and he made some 
updates. So there isn't a lot that needs to be changed. In fact, there's nothing really that major that yeah. needs to be changed with it. Just um, some contact information. Um, Chance did some, made some changes. And I have um, trying to get uh, in touch with um, the school principal and um, Don. Um, yep. you know, Larry was the main contact person and he's retired now. So I just need some information from from them as far as the school is concerned, and then um, we're ready to, to send it in. It is something that I could, um, once I get that information, I could sign it um, and uh, send it in, um, or we could we could wait and, and um, look at it at our next select board meeting. We'd only be a few days late, and in the past we've been many months late, so it's, it's not <laughs> a big I'm comfortable with Chance's work, and so I would be, okay perfectly comfortable with you signing. Do we need to have a motion to approve it? Um, I guess we could make a motion that that um, we approve my uh, signing the, um, the uh, plan once we have the final bit of uh, updated information. I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. So hopefully, you know, we'll get that information back from them and um, I'll, make that change and sign it and send it in, um, send it in. That's it, uh, motion to adjourn. And so anything up. else that anybody wants to bring up? I guess I should. Just a quick question. We might wanna reach out and look at the guidance to see how much, if by the next time we might be able to have a real meeting. Right, yeah, I would like to. Be changing every week. So my opinion is if, once we get to where we can have a meeting with social distancing, we go back to meeting at the library. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I, I would like so to we can do like that. If not, we'll do this again. It's okay. But yeah, it's worked. It's worked. But it's as not soon as we could get back to our regular meetings, I would like to do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know I get notices from a lot of different, and you probably do, yeah. too, Paul, from different state agencies. and It's a little confusing right now as to who does what. So yeah, I know. Probably the league will be the best choice for us to ask what we can do. And I haven't really seen something that cleared us yet, but I'm hoping okay. by then maybe we'll have a little more, but maybe the, for sure the meeting after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I know May 15th was the last date that, you know, for for the um, physical the stay at home. And, but I think that's gonna get some type being, of, there'll be some modified a bit now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there'll be yeah. some restrictions even after the 15th, so. Right. Yeah, from what I've been hearing, you know, they may open things up again, but the, they still will want people to practice the physical Correct. distancing and the, the large, face groups, masks, will be, large like groups will be a problem, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, as soon as we can get back to a, an actual meeting in a place, um, I would like that. Um, despite <laughs> this yeah, has been would. fun, but <laughs> this is fun, but I'm I'm over it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Can I say one thing? Yes. I just wanted to say, if anybody's listening, if anybody needs a face mask and they don't have a face mask, please let me know and okay. I'll get them face masks. I probably okay. put some support here anyways. Or... Yeah, okay. I know I know. Ellie needed some and she put a thing on front porch for them and there were many people in town that um, replied and uh, we have a nice selection oh. now. So oh, good. <laughs> You'll need more than one. You got to wash them every day. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> Um, anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Um, I'll, second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great.